Hi everyone, it's Miss Cable from Malmesbury Maths. So this is the first video in a series on the topic of angles in parallel lines. So this video we're going to focus specifically on finding angles around a transversal across parallel lines. So there's a lot of vocab there, so first of all we're going to break that down and see what that means. So a transversal is a line that intersects or crosses or meets at least two other lines. So if I draw three lines on here, I can see that this one here is a transversal because it's crossing or intersecting one, two other lines. So that is going to be one. This one here only crosses once, so that is not going to be one. This one here, again, it only crosses the one line. So that is not going to be a transversal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw some different lines on this diagram and as I draw them I want you to think are they transversals or are they not transversals. Okay so let's start with one going across like that. No that's not a transversal it's only intersecting the one time. Yep yeah, so this one intersects one two three four. So that is going to be a transversal. Okay, and finally, let's do one more. Um, let's go across the top here. Yeah, nice and easy. It crosses twice, so that is going to be a transversal. So next we're going to talk about the word parallel, which I'm sure you've come across a lot throughout school. So what parallel means is just two lines that are travelling in the same direction and they always remain the same distance apart. So no matter how long I carried these lines on for, if they were exactly parallel, which they are not, then they would always remain at the same distance apart. Okay, so a few more examples. Doesn't matter which direction they're going in, as long as it's the same way. And we show they're parallel, sorry, by drawing these arrows here. Draw another set, just going in the same direction. These arrows tell me that it's parallel. If I've got more than uh, one pair of parallel lines in a diagram, so for example, this shape, or, which is a very dodgy parallelogram, I've got a pair of parallel lines here, and I've also got a pair of parallel lines here. Because these lines aren't parallel to these ones, I need to show that they are different somehow. So instead of using one arrow, I just used two. Okay, so that is what parallel means. In this video, we are looking specifically at transversals across parallel lines. Okay, so that's just if I've got a pair or more of parallel lines, I'm looking at the line, the transversal, that intersects both or more of them. I'm going to add another transversal onto this diagram here, going across like this. You can see it's a transversal because it is crossing twice, but it is not a transversal across the parallel lines. Okay, so that is not something that I'm looking for. I'm going to put some questions up on your screen and it should be if you've got the worksheet question one, if you could highlight all of the transversals across parallel lines for each of the diagrams. Some of them may not have any, some may have more than one. Pause this video and have a go at the questions. Okay, so here are the answers. If you've got any wrong, can you make sure you are looking to see why they are wrong? I've drawn a pair of parallel lines on the board and now I'm going to draw in a transversal that intersects both of them. As I draw in this transversal, I want you to look at the angles that I'm creating. So you can see I've created four angles where I've intersected this line here and another four angles where I've intersected this line here. I have labelled these angles A, B, C, D, E, F, G and H. So these angles are actually all related to each other in some way. They are either congruent or supplementary. Congruent means equal or the same and supplementary is two angles that add up to make 180 degrees. Because all of these angles are related to each other, that means if I'm given just one of them, 
I can use that one angle to find all of the other seven. So for example, say I'm given B, say I am told that B is 43 degrees. First of all, I'm going to focus on these four up here. As you can see, 43 is opposite to D. And we know that vertically opposite angles, so that means angles that are opposite each other when you've got two intersecting lines, are equal. So that means D is also going to be 43 degrees. I also know that angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. As you can see on this straight line here, that means A plus 43 equals 180. So therefore A must be 180, take away 43, which is 137. And finally C is opposite to A, so C must also be 137, and I can see that that's correct because it also lies on a straight line with this angle here. Now I'm looking for the relationship between these angles up here and these angles down here. So on this piece of paper, I've sort of drawn in these lines like this. So we can see the angles. You can see that if I slide this piece of paper down the transversal, as the two lines are parallel, these two lines are parallel, they're going to directly match up down the bottom here. So that means all of these angles are exactly the same as all of these angles down the bottom. So that means E is going to be 137. F is 43. G is 137. And H is 43. So using the example that we have just done up here, I have now put a practice question underneath that is on your worksheet for you to have a go at. So think about what we did here and use the same logic and apply it to this one down here. If you want to get some um, tracing paper or baking paper, grease proof paper and trace these lines on and slide up to here to see if it works, that's fine as well. But have a go. Going through this example then, same as we did up here, focusing on these four angles first. So I know vertically opposite angles are equal, so this is also going to be 113 degrees. Then I've got angles on a straight line that I know add up to 180. So this angle here is going to be 180, take away 113, which is 67. And again, that vertically opposite angle is also going to be 67, which I can see is correct because they are also on a straight line and as are they. So now looking at relating these ones to these angles up here, again, draw this on a piece of paper that matches up, hopefully, exactly like this. Sliding it along the transversal I can see that they still match up exactly. So this one's 113, 67, 113, and 67. Okay, so now I've got two figures on the board, figure one and figure two. What I want you to do is think about, can I do the same thing as we've been doing for both of these diagrams? That is, given one of these angles, would I be able to use that to find all of the other angles on the diagram? So starting with figure one, let's say I'm told that this angle here is 59 degrees. Let's start how we did before, focus on these four angles, vertically opposite, is the same. This one is going to be 180, take away 59, which is 121 degrees, 
Oops. Which means this one here is also 121 degrees. Again, I've done a little piece of paper with the angles on here. It's important to say that all of these pieces of paper have been different because the angles have been different each time. So if I put this one where it's supposed to line up on there, just like this, I can see, again, if I slide it up the transversal, if I'd have drawn my lines parallel, then they would have matched up. They should be parallel. They should match up. So in the question, because I'm told that they are parallel, I can mark that in as 59, 59, 121, and 121. Nice and easy. Okay, now we go on to figure two. Have a look at what's different about figure two. So I've got a transversal cutting across two lines. These two lines aren't actually parallel, and let's look at how that changes our approach. So let's say I'm, say I'm going this angle here. Um, let's say it's 80 degrees. Again, focus just on these four for now. Vertically opposite, 80 degrees. Angles on a straight line are up to 180. So this angle here is going to be 180, take away 80 which is 100 degrees, and again, vertically opposite. Now I've got another piece of paper where I've drawn these angles on. So let me line them up, just like this. Now you can see, if I try and slide this up the transversal, these lines now do not match. These angles do not match up to these angles up here. And that's because these two lines aren't parallel. As these two lines aren't parallel, that means there's actually no relationship between these angles and these angles up here. So I cannot use these angles to find out what these angles are. I would need to know what one of these were to find the other ones. So it's really important to remember that we can only use that relationship if we are looking at a transversal across parallel lines. Now I wanted to show you a slightly different example. So if you look at the one on the board, I'm now given one angle and I'm asked to find the value of a specific angle X. This looks a bit different because I have got a transversal that's touching both lines, but it hasn't created the eight angles that we're used to seeing. But you can see that if I just extended these lines, at each end, that is now looking like the problems that we've just been solving. So using the same logic, I don't need to work out the other ones. I can just picture this sliding up here, so I know that this one is 73 degrees, and that means the angle opposite, x, is also going to be 73 degrees. Okay, there's nothing stopping you drawing these extension lines on a, an exam paper or a question if you find that they help you, but if you can just look at it and understand, then that's fine. Okay, so I've put another question up on the board underneath. So using the example that we've just done up here, I would like you to have a go at this one and find X. So if you pause the video and have a go at that one. Okay, so really speedily going through this example, you can picture this transversal extending, giving us those eight angles. You can see that if I shift this one down here, that means this angle here is 120. So therefore X is going to be 180, because they're on a straight line, take away that 120, which is 60 degrees. So X is 60. Degrees. Okay, so you're now ready for the final set of questions on the worksheet, which I will put up on the screen now. What you need to do is go through and find as many angles as you can in each of the diagrams. Okay, so the answers are now on the screen. Can you go through and mark the ones that you've done? If you've got any wrong, can you make sure you're looking over and see where you went wrong? I'm just going to quickly go through question eight. So looking at this angle here, 
I've got that 73, I can use that 73 to find all of the angles around this point. So I know that one's also going to be 73, and this one here is going to be 180 take away 73, which is 107. And this one here will also be 107. These angles here match up. Remember, you're going along the transversal across the parallel lines. So here's the transversal. So I slide these up and I can see that they're going to match to these angles up here. So I've got another 107 degrees, 73 degrees, 107 and 73. And then on this side, I've got that 68, finding um, the angles around the point here. And then down here, I've got another 68. This one here is going to be 180 take away 68, which is 112 degrees. This one here is 112 degrees. And I can see that if I slide these up this transversal, they're going to match to these ones up here. 68 and 112. It's important to see which ones match up with which. So for example, these do not match up with these angles here because these two transversals are not parallel. Okay, so hopefully you are now happy and confident with finding the angles around transversals on parallel lines. Unfortunately, at GCSE, we do have to play a bit of a memory game and there are some names and definitions for the different relationships that we have come across. So there will be a separate video that explains all of that. Okay, thanks for watching.